Hello and welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. Today we're going to be unboxing this. It's the Range Rover LH36D 1992 in 124th scale by Ayashima. Now as you can see on the front here, there's uh, this illustration here, information about licensing, uh, it says actual length 186 millimeters, may contain small parts, that sort of thing. On the side here, some history of the car and illustrations of the model. Few dimensions, more things, and suggested colours from the Mr. Hobby range. So we'll open it up. 2020 saw the 50th anniversary of the Range Rover, and I took these videos at the British Motor Museum. The first generation Range Rover was released as a multi purpose vehicle in 1970 and produced until 1996 had the off-road performance at a high level as well as comfort of use like luxury cars. This kit replicates type LH36 Range Rover from 1992 in catalogue specification. Parts for mainframe and body floor are separate to replicate its strong chassis. Decals for the interior such as stripe design and wood panel enables you to build the kit in detail. I got this from Kent Models, they're giving away uh, key range at the moment, which is very nice. It's Japanese on the other side. So we've got instructions, decals, body, a few bags, a couple of grey sprues in there, white sprue and uh, grey sprue in there, and then oh, a couple of parts I took out, wheels and another white sprue, grey sprue, tyres, and the clear parts. We'll start by going through the instructions. about the decals, colours required, it starts with the undercarriage here, it's a fold out sheet, it uses poly caps, the next page there which has the interior parts, Moving on to the bodywork, this comes with a sunroof, then putting it all together and then you've got the parts and attaching the wheels and mudguards here on the back. Looks like every single part in here is marked down to be used. So we'll start going through the bags. This sprue here, got mud guards, wing mirrors, front grille, which is uh, see through, which is nice. I think this is the vent for the bonnet, um, other bits of the kind of axle and things, wipers, that's the kind of skid plate on the underside. Nice and crisp, can't see any flash, which is nice. This kind of ladder frame here is already kind of constructed, so I think that's probably the fuel tank, maybe it's the spare tyre. Uh, and there's the engine. It's all the engine detail you're getting here. Actually, this parts of the suspension here are kind of constructed as well, so that should speed up assembly quite a lot. This white sprue here is for some of the interior parts and some exterior parts. So we've got bits of the dash. The pedals are inbuilt. Um, there's a handle there. Um, the center console, and then we've got the bumpers over here. And then these, I think, are the um, inserts for the mirrors. So I don't know whether it wants you to paint those silver or maybe there is some chrome adhesive that comes with the kit. Undercarriage uh, which is also the interior so there's not a great deal of detail there on the interior floor um, and then I think that goes on the back of the seats maybe and that maybe is a boot inlay and armrests. Still nice it's got a large interior, so you want to add some details if you can. Wheels here, done in chrome, these kind of three-spoke, five wheel nut wheels. Yep. White sprue, got a bit of the gearbox. Um, I think that is a cover for the spare tyre. Um, disc brakes, exhaust. I think these are um, one option for the uh, number plates. Good. Then here we've got the seats, so the seat 
for the front. You can see there where the um, armrests go, the knees go on the back. Then these are for the interior. I think that top of the wheel thing goes there to show that there would be a spare wheel in that. Um, yeah, some nice detail on there, speakers, things like that. The steering wheel is there, quite an old fashioned looking design. Uh, rear view mirror there as well. And the uh, rear seats, you can see there where an armrest would go. Got some clear parts here, so you can see that the interior is just one piece. Though there is some nice detail, like these kind of um, heat strips here. And you can also see that it's got some moulded in um, uh, sun visors, which is quite a nice detail as well. Then you've got a sunroof in this kit, which you can choose to leave open, should you prefer. And then you've got uh, tail lights indicators and uh, things like that. And then you've got the bodywork, it's a pretty large car. But yeah, looks pretty nicely molded. Open bits for like where the vent needs to go here, that's nice because it means you don't have to mask it. There's a lot of black trim on this car. It was pretty heavy duty. So I thought as a comparison, I might put this up next to the uh, recent Revell Land Rover Series 3. And obviously you can see that the ride height would be more similar to that. But you can see that the scale, I think, is pretty similar. They're both um, uh, five-door cars. And um, they're pretty similar in size. The Range Rover is wider. That's to be expected, considering the age. I really like this Land Rover kit actually. I think if you're a, if you're an off-roader fan, or if you're a fan of Land Rovers, um, then this is definitely a good one to pick up. So it'd be nice to have a Range Rover to go with it. Anyway, considering this isn't a new kit, but um, there's very little flash, a few mold lines down the front here and along the edge of the bonnet, as you might expect. But I think quite a few of them, they've kind of tried to hide within the trim along the edge here, but down the back there's another one as well. And then finally we have got um, the uh, set here. So as I said before, we've got this chrome sheet here, which I guess you could use for mirrors and things like that. And then we've the decal sheet, which is very nicely printed. Um, some wood trim there and uh, kind of very square dials and things like that. Um, three options with number plates. Actually, no, sorry, um, four options with number plates, although the Japanese ones are the same. But yeah, very nice there, nice and colourful. I nearly forgot, we've got the tyres and poly caps, and also um, the only bit of sort of photo etch in this kit. I'm not sure whether it's technically photo etch, but um, you've got two um, uh, number plates like this very similar to the ones that came in the MGB kit but they're a nice addition and then you've got the tyres which are nice and solid off-road tread on those I've actually got markings for Bridgestone they say uh, mud Dula, which is nice but yeah nice and tough so I guess you can see there that they fit very nicely So that's all we have for today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be building this as part of Kent Models uh, build off this month. I'm really looking forward to showing you what I have planned. Thanks a lot for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe and I'll see you soon.